Raider Nation, if you haven't already subscribed to the Raiders Report, make sure you go ahead and do so. We're the number one most watched Raiders channel on YouTube for multiple reasons. I'm trying to get to 115,000 subs, just need 691 more. I've noticed. Colin Kaepernick is a big time topic, which is why we're talking about it here. And we get a lot of new viewers. So if this is the first time you've come across the Raiders Report, this is why you subscribe. I get your videos every single day. We go live at least once a week. And if they end up signing Cap, we will be going live. We are an interactive YouTube channel. More subs equals more videos. And the show is 100% free. So hit that sub button and turn on those notifications. Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report, and today's show is presented by our awesome new sponsor, Aura. It's an all-in-one digital safety net to make sure that you don't get caught by those hackers, those bad scam artists out there. 49 million Americans were victims of identity theft. $56 billion that was. It's a lot, a lot of money. I don't want that to happen to you, so make sure you guys are staying safe at Aura dot com slash chat sports so coming up here on today's show i'm going to give you the pros and the cons of the raiders going out and signing colin kaepernick i discussed this yesterday around the news that the raiders were going to be working him out and today we already have a new update according to ian rapaport the workout that kaepernick had with mcdaniels and ziegler that apparently went on for five hours it went well, and the door is open. So he works out. Apparently it goes well, and if the Raiders end up making this move, I'm telling you what, it is going to be a major, major thing. So I'm on the internet. I'm on social media. I see everybody having these arguments of, does it make sense for the Raiders to go out and get them? So all I'm going to do here today is present my topics of the five reasons why it would make sense, the pros, and then the five reasons why, well, I don't think it would make sense. So coming up here, we got the five reasons why the Raiders should end up signing Colin Kaepernick. But before I go ahead and give these answers, I want to know. Remember early on in the show I said we're interactive? I know how diehard fans are. I know the people that bleed silver and black. So if you come across this show, bring that passion down to the comment section right now. Should the Raiders sign Colin Kaepernick? Type that Y for yes, or you can go ahead and type your N for no. The first reason of, I'll say, a pro to going out and signing Kaepernick. The Raiders, now you have more of a mobile quarterback. When you look at all the guys currently on the roster, there isn't a mobile quarterback. I'm sorry, there isn't. And when you look at it from a career standpoint, 375 carries, 2,300 yards. He averaged 6.1 yards per carry, 69 games. 13 total touchdowns. If you're wondering, well, Mitch, how does that rank on a per-game basis? Kaepernick is actually top five all-time by quarterbacks for rushing yards per game, coming in at 33.3 rushing yards per game, behind only guys like Cam Newton, Josh Allen, Michael Vick, and Lamar Jackson. So you're going to be able to add some legs to your quarterback room. The next pro here. He knows Mick Lombardi. Who the heck is Mick Lombardi? Mick Lombardi is the Raiders' new offensive coordinator, and Lombardi was with the 49ers as an assistant back in 2014. This is going to be Lombardi's first year as an OC, and who knows? Maybe if you're just trying to get a little bit better of a red zone offense or you're trying to work with somebody else who has past experience with you, that's a pro that I'm going to go ahead and give. The next reason here, next pro for going out and bringing in Colin Kaepernick. The Raiders are, and I'm going to say in quotes here, cash-strapped. What do I mean by that necessarily? Well, there's been a report that's been going around for years. And essentially since the Raiders moved to Las Vegas. And that apparently they're okay for salary cap, but they're cash-strapped. Well, Mitch, what does that mean exactly? It means Mark Davis spent a lot of money getting that new stadium. They didn't have a lot of money coming in because of COVID early on. You go ahead, you pay certain players in sit certain situations. By going out and bringing in Colin Kaepernick, the Raiders are going to make a lot more money now, June, July, August, and then definitely if he ends up making the team. When I think about cash strap, when I think about, all right, well, if I bring in a player to make money right away, my mind went to Tim Tebow. And 
Tim Tebow signs with the Jacksonville Jaguars. This is what Sports Illustrated had to say on Tim Tebow jersey sales when the Jags signed him last offseason. The 33-year-old signed, by the way, that's how old Colin Kaepernick is, signed a one-year deal with the Jaguars on Thursday. Again, this is last year. NFL shops started selling Tebow 85 jerseys almost immediately. Since then, so it was about a week span, he led the league in jersey sales. Not only is his men's jersey the top selling item, but Tebow actually has the five most sold items since he signed his contract. So my question to everyone watching right now, seeing that, who do you think would sell more jerseys? Who would sell more apparel? Who would make more money? Do you think Tim Tebow playing for the Jacksonville Jaguars would have made more money type TT? Or do you think Colin Kaepernick, Signing with the Raiders, his jerseys, his t-shirts, ends up making more money. TT for Tim Tebow, CK for Colin Kaepernick. Let's go to the next one here. More national attention. And some people might say, eh, I don't know if the Raiders need any more national attention. You know what, you might not be wrong on that. But all I want you to do after you get done watching this video, or if you're watching on your phone, go to your desktop. If you're watching on your computer, whip out your phone right now. And I want you to just Google search this, okay? Just search Raiders on Google. What comes up? It is Colin Kaepernick this, Colin Kaepernick that, Kaepernick, Kaepernick, Kaepernick. Now, for me, as a host, I kind of like this, right? It brings more attention to my show. It brings more attention to the team. And if Colin ends up signing, get ready. A guy has once said, strap it on, buckle up, whatever the hell you want to say. The amount of Kaepernick rumors are going to start popping out of the woodwork. And if he throws one good ball, I'm not talking about like a two a good ball to Tyreek Hill that was essentially a fair catch for Tyreek. I'm talking about an actual good ball. The Kaepernick rumors are going to get swirling. So get ready for it. The last one, and this is kind of the biggest one for me. The cap debate is over. And if you're like, well, what, what the heck are you talking about? The cap debate. Since cap hasn't played since 2016, the amount of people that have said Kaepernick is better than half the quarterbacks in the NFL. Kaepernick is this. Kaepernick can still get it done at a high level. Hell, I went through our YouTube comments on yesterday's video. And if you haven't checked it out yet, please go ahead and do so. And I was trying to find some Kaepernick comments. This first one from Raider Use. Cap is better than Mariota. Cap took the Winers to the Super Bowl. You're right. Kaepernick did help the 49ers get to the Super Bowl. Do you know what year that was? It was a long time ago. This one from LV Raider 702. Yes, bring in Kaepernick. DC backup until he takes his job. Cap is ready and hungry. He is going to ball out in Vegas. Just wait. Nobody job is safe. Not even car. Three-year extension. There are people that think Kaepernick is better than Derek Carr after not playing in the NFL since 2016. It's a wild world we live in. It's wild. Coming up next here on the Raiders Report, we're going to be getting into the five reasons why the Raiders shouldn't sign Colin Kaepernick, which if you've watched the show, you'll know this is kind of where I stand. Before I get into my reasons of why you shouldn't do it, man, I'm really, really excited to go ahead and partner with Aura, who is sponsoring today's video. Some of the benefits that they offer, financial fraud protection, identity theft protection, online and device security, family plans to protect five people. Man, we got to face it, right? You do more online than ever. And it's really as simple as that. And Aura's going to do what they can to keep you safe. I got a cousin. Every time I see her, and when I think of how this would apply to me, I believe that I'm smart enough not to get hacked or fished or click on a link that I shouldn't. But everyone out there, and I mean everyone out there, has an aunt that's like, wow, I just want a 14 free trip to the Bahamas. All I got to do is click on this link. We have that. Or how many people out there know somebody that give their phone to a child? I'm telling you right now, I don't remember the last day that's gone by that I didn't get a text message or that I didn't get an email of somebody trying to hack into me, trying to get my passwords. You might think that you're slick by putting an exclamation point at the end of every one of your passwords, but guess what? People out there are very, very smart. So I'm offering you guys a 14 free, 14-day 14 free trial. All you got to do is go to the link that you see below, Aura.com slash Chatsports. And if you're someone like me, you're like, man, I'm not going to get caught. Do it for your family. Do it for your loved ones because your kid might click on that link. Your aunt might click on that link. Hell, I'd bet a lot of money. My mom would probably click on the link. So we got an all-in-one safety 
tool here for your entire family. Protect yourself online or a .com slash chat sports. That link's available for you all in the comments and in the description of today's video. All right, y'all, let's go into some of the cons here of why the Raiders should not go out and get Kaepernick. He hasn't played since 2016. Let me say that again. He hasn't played since 2016. Have you done? Have you haven't done something since 2016 and try to do it again? It's not easy. And when I think of the best tool that Cap had when he was a starting quarterback in the NFL was his rushing ability. 2016, 69 carries, 468 yards, two touchdowns. 2015, 46 carries, 256 yards, a touchdown. And then yes, the better years: 2014, 2013, 2012. This might be a crazy thing to say out loud for a 34-year-old guy, which is Cap. I do not believe that he runs as well as he did or does at 34 the way he did when he was 29 or the way that he did when he was in football shape. Call me crazy. I don't think that that's the case. And personally, so if you take away his legs a little bit, that means he has to rely on his arm. That means he has to become a little bit more of a pocket passer. He's never going to be strictly a pocket passer, but he does have to be one a little bit more. So when you look at 2016 and his 11 starts, from a outside looking in, some of you are going to be like, Mitch, 16 touchdowns, four interceptions. That's not bad. What is bad is 59.2% completion percentage, 2,241 yards, and the amount of people that are always telling me, well, it doesn't matter what stats you put up. All that matters is wins when you're a quarterback, right? Imagine if Derek Carr was 1-10 in 10 as a starter in 2016. I can hear you all crying from your houses and your apartments right now. Colin Kaepernick was 1-10 in 10 as a starter back in 2016. All right, well, let's look at 2015. Perfect. This is eight starts. 59% completion percentage, 1,615 yards, six touchdowns, five interceptions. That year, though, as a starter, two and six. So, all right, if the most recent sample size that I have seen, which is 19 starts, two years put together here, 2015-2016, is Kaepernick, 22 touchdowns, nine interceptions, a completion percentage under 60, and in the last 19 games, he's three and 16 as a starter. If you're sitting here telling me Cap was good in 2015, 2016, I think you're crazy. He doesn't have the legs to be able to run the way he used to. So you're going to have to rely on his arm. I do not want to watch Colin Kaepernick throw ground balls like he was doing back in 2015 and 2016 to our talented receivers and tight ends. The next reason here, extra drama around the Raiders. I mean, if there's a team that doesn't need any extra drama, you're watching it, baby. This is just a... Tip of the iceberg. of This is just last season. Go back and look at 2020, 2019 with FABs. Get them down in the comments. But last season alone, John Gruden's emails. The Henry Ruggs crash. Damon Arnett video saying he's going to kill people. Nate Hobbs DUI. Mike Mayock fired. So essentially, you lost two first-round picks. You lost one of your players who almost got himself in real trouble with the DUI. You lost your head coach. You lost your general manager. Both of them got the hook. So let's go ahead and bring in more drama. No. And I know how passionate this fan base is. And I asked this yesterday on Locals. And I'm curious what the YouTube audience has to say. How many years have you been a Raiders fan? Right, this is a, a two-sided question. Let me know first. How many years have you been a Raiders fan? Because I know there's a lot of people out there very, very dedicated. And then answer this. Was last year the most drama-packed year you have ever witnessed by the Raiders? Because when I was live yesterday on Locals, a lot of people said, yes, it was. I've been a fan since birth. I've been a fan since the 70s, 60s, 80s, 90s. Last season for the Raiders was the craziest year ever. Wouldn't you just think maybe, just maybe, that you'd want to concentrate on just football and going out there and winning games? I would say the answer to that would be yes. Here's my next point here, why it doesn't make sense to go out and get Kaepernick. I don't think he would be the backup. Like, we could sit up here all the time and talk about this or that. I do not view Colin Kaepernick as the backup behind Derek Carr. But Mitch, Nick Mullins, Jared Stidham, Chase Garvers, Cap's definitely better than them. Is he? Is, is, is 2020 Kaepernick better than Nick Mullins? Because as a passer... I, I'm going to say no. Hell, I think the 2016 version of Kaepernick as a passer is not better than the 2020 version of Nick Mullins as a passer. So I'm going to give advantage to Nick Mullins. Okay, and then on top of that, I do think that Stidham, okay, knows the offense better. 
than what Cap would right now. Jared Stidham's at least worked with Josh McDaniels. There's a reason why the Raiders went ahead and they traded for Stidham. Do I ever think Stidham's going to start? God, I hope not. But I do think that he understands the offense a little bit better. I think from a talent standpoint, Kaepernick is, of course, more talented than Stidham. But if you're getting into your third quarterback, your potential practice squad quarterback, I don't want a drama-filled QB that I don't think knows the system and can't really hit my wide receivers. I want somebody that knows the system, which is what Jared Stidham knows. The next reason here, Mariota is better than Kaepernick. Sorry to the guy who thought that this wasn't true. I've seen the comments in here, and some of you are like, well, what the hell does this have to do with the Raiders? Mariota ended up signing with the Atlanta Falcons. To all you people out there, you are 100% right. Mariota right now is 29. That was the same age that Kaepernick was back in 2016. And I'll take Mariota right now in 20 or right now at 29. And I would have rather had Mariota right now at 29 than Kaepernick when he was 29 back in 2016. And again, I think that he's gotten worse since he hasn't played in the NFL. The fact that I also think that, I would say Mariota's a more mobile quarterback than Cap right now. I think he could still run. Both are injury prone, no doubt about it. Cap had a lot more injuries in 2015 to 2016. Why? Running the football in the NFL gets you injured. Mariota, when he ended up signing his two-year deal with the Atlanta Falcons, he got $6.75 million guaranteed. His cap hit this season is 4.25. There was a 2019 report that came out around Kaepernick that said Kaepernick wanted $20 million to play in the AAF. I'm not sitting here saying that he wants $20 million. He better not get $20 million. But if he wanted $20 million to play in the AAF, what makes everyone so confident that he's going to come in and take a team-friendly deal? I don't have a good answer to that. I don't think, I don't think he will. I, I, I don't think he will. So I would rather invest my money in other team needs. And if the Raiders wanted to have a mobile quarterback, if they wanted somebody who brought that other dimension to the offense, why not do what you can to maybe keep Mariota happy. The fans loved him. He was a great locker room fit. My simple argument is this. If you're telling me the Raiders wanted the mobile quarterback, why not do what you can to make Mariota happy? Instead, you let Mariota go, which is fine, but you're not going to let Mariota go to bring in Colin Kaepernick. That doesn't make any sense. Before I go ahead and give my last reason here of why the Raiders should not go out and sign Kaepernick, remember, y'all, you can always hit me up on Twitter. You can always hit me up on IG. The offseason is the perfect time to go ahead and give me a follow. I know I make a lot of content. I probably make more content around the Raiders than anybody living and breathing right now, but I do also a lot of stuff on social media. Why? Because I care, because I want to keep you guys up to date. So seriously, follow me. IG, Twitter, I'm literally everywhere, at MitchellRent365. The last reason here is this. Derek's a great dude, but I really do not believe if he were to come up and say, if the Raiders signed Kaepernick, he'd be like, you know what, I'm okay with it. If I'm DC, I'm frustrated. And I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? I have done everything I possibly could do to make sure that I'm putting myself, but not only myself, this team and organization in the right place. DC coming off, I would say probably his worst year of his last three. Yes, career high in yards, but touchdowns, he had turnovers. Coming off the worst year of his last three years. Wouldn't you just want to have a little normalcy? Like, wouldn't you just want to have a drama-free year? You went ahead, you convinced Devontae Adams to leave Aaron Rodgers, the back-to-back -back NFL MVP, to come here play for the Raiders. Finally, it's my team, no drama. Well, wait, not only that, DC took a team-friendly deal. Now, first, you're going to see this number, Top five highest paid quarterback, 40.5. Three years, 121.5 million dollar contract. What makes Derek Carr's contract so friendly and why I think he'd be frustrated by it is because when you look at the fully guarantees of those five players that I just showed, Rodgers got over 100. Deshaun Watson's the biggest laughing stock here, 230. Mahomes, 63. Josh Allen, 100. Derek Carr took 24.9 million in guaranteed money. That's team friendly. In fact... There are 25, no, 24 other quarterbacks that will make more full and guaranteed money than Derek Carr this season. Does anybody out there think that DC is the 25th best quarterback in the NFL? I've seen the comments. I've seen everything you guys have to say. Nobody thinks that. I am probably get hated on more because I don't consider DC a top 10 quarterback. I'd probably put him in this 12 range. But the fact that he was willing to take this money, the fact that he's essentially taking a one-year prove-it deal, which I'm glad he did because all offseason I was like, one-year prove-it deal, one-year prove-it deal. 
And that's what he did. He took a one-year prove-it deal. When you look at his cap hit by year, he's making 19.35. That 17.3 million was guaranteed. He got a few other extra guarantees, which got him up to 24.9. But in 2023, 2024, 2025, there is no money there guaranteed. So yes, he has the opportunity to make 34. He has the opportunity to make 43 million over his final two years. But by 2023 and then 2024 and 2025, that's going to be reasonable. And let's just say Derek doesn't play well this year. The Raiders can cut him. They can save $29 million, $40 million, and then $41.3 million over the next three years, which is a total of $110.68 million. That's a lot of money. So if I'm DC, I am frustrated as hell by these Colin Kaepernick rumors, no doubt about it. So we're going to wrap this up. We're going to put a bow on it one more time. Signing Colin Kaepernick, the pros and the cons. The reason why you should do it, the Raiders would finally have a mobile quarterback. He knows Mick Lombardi. The Raiders are a little bit cash-strapped, and he'd bring in more money this offseason. You'd get more national attention, and then you could finally end the Decapi. Is he still good? Does he deserve to be in the NFL? The cons, he hasn't played since 2016. The Raiders do not need any extra drama. I don't think Cap would even be the backup. If you wanted the mobile quarterback, why not just try to keep Mariota and Derek Carr, the face of your franchise? He can't tell me this. I'm going to believe that he's frustrated. So if you made it this far in the video, y'all, I appreciate you. I know there's a lot of other content creators out there. And not only do I want you to let me know what you're thinking, I want you to let the world know. Why? Because the world's eyes are on the Raiders right now because that's the type of attention Kaepernick is going to bring. So, I want you to share this video on social media if you made it to the end, and let me know, are you pro or are you con going out and bringing in Kaepernick? If you want the Raiders to bring in Colin Kaepernick, let me know. If you don't want the Raiders to bring in Colin Kaepernick, let me know. How do you share the video? Click share button underneath this thing. There's literally an arrow. You select the Twitter icon, tag me at MitchellRens365, use hashtag Kaepernick, and then click tweet. The eyes are on Raider Nation. Let's make sure we're heard.